This is the fourth bedroom or the sewing room or the office that comes off of the off of the den. This used to have cabinets on this wall and on this wall and it was paneled all the way around. I've got the paneling off. Fortunately, the sheetrock underneath is in good shape. Uh, sometimes they used to actually glue the paneling to the wall and when you take it off, it makes a real mess. But this paneling was just nailed on. So now I'm gonna be able to just start and uh, spackle this existing sheetrock. That'll save us a lot of time not having to hang new sheetrock.
Another thing that will save me a lot of work is that I am not going to finish this corner seam. That's usually the most difficult seam to do, the most time consuming. But because this is uh, textured, I can't really do this seam, lay flat tape there against the texture. It doesn't work very well. So when the paneling was on, the paneling went up to it and it had a piece of quarter round up here, quarter round molding. So we're just going to paint this and then put quarter round back on there around that seam. Save me a lot of work. When you put this on here like this, you put the mud on, you put the tape on, and then you scrape out as much of the mud as you possibly can. You try to scrape it completely off of the sheetrock. You try to scrape it out from under the tape so there's only a tiny thin little layer. And the mud, when it dries, is actually the glue that holds the tape in place. But for this first coat, you don't want much mud on there, just enough to hold the paper in place. And then for the second coat, you go over it. Now see, after both of these are dry, then I can come in and do this seam without messing up this. Okay, now this is the next morning. These are now dry. So now I can run this seam here without messing up this one. So it's now a couple days a bit later and all of this is dry so I'm ready to start on the second coat. I don't do any sanding, I just sort of do this just to knock off any high spots that little bumps of things. Remember my goal is to do this without any sanding at all. Now what I'm going to do here, if I do this corner or this side and then this side while this is still wet. It's really difficult to get a corner because when you do this, you're going to mess up this wet side. So what I do here is I'll just do this side and then I'll do this and then I'll come back tomorrow and I'll do the other side and I'll do that. So I want this edge to taper out to nothing, so I put an angle on it like that and taper it out so there's no sharp edge here. spot like that. I used to try to fix it 
while it's wet, but I've since learned that it's easier if I just let it dry and then sand it just a little bit and then the third skim coat will fill that in. That's how it's done. Once I get a little longer into the process, many times I use a drop light like this. It works well on a spackle bucket. But it's, I find that it's really necessary. Now this was a hole that I patched. This is the first coat. I did the second coat here and here. And this looks pretty good when you look at it straight on. In flat light or when the light is straight on like this, it looks pretty good. But look what happens when I use this light and I go like this. Then you can see how bad it really is. <laughs> Usually I use, I do two coats and then a skim coat. This is so bad, I'll probably have to do three coats here and then a skim coat. Now I'm pretty much finished with the second coat in this room. I'm ready for the third and final skim coat. Sometimes it's hard to tell whether I've actually done the third coat or not. It's that thin. So here's what I like to do. I just go around putting an X mark on all of the seams. That way when I do the skim coat, it'll cover that up. And then I'll know that I've actually done the third coat. fairly good when you just look at it until you put the light on it sideways and you can see all of these little imperfections. And during the day you wouldn't notice this but at night when there's a light overhead or if there's a lamp right here all of those things are going to show up at night. So that's what the third skim coat is for. I'll uh, put the mud on and then I'll literally try to scrape all of it off. I won't leave any volume left on there at all. And that will fill in all of those little imperfections there. Each coat goes a little bit wider this way as well to taper in the corners. completely scrape it off. Tapered up there, tapered down here.
Now it's almost completely smooth. One little line right there that will very easily sand out. So that's my goal is to get it completely smooth where I don't have to do any sanding, of course, or at all. Of course, you do have to do some sanding, but it'll just be light. So now I've got the third finish coat done and it's dry, so I'm ready to start sanding. To do that, I use sanding sponges. This is a, it's got a handle, but it's a sponge that has sandpaper attached to it. And that way it kind of bends around all little imperfections and gets in there and does a good job. And then for the corner, in here, I have this sponge. You can see it's got a bevel on it. So what that bevel does is it allows me to get right up into the corner here and sand this side without messing up this side. If it was just a square thing, then as I sanded this, I would also be getting a little bit here. But this bevel allows me to sand separately one side without messing up the other. From time to time I get comment from somebody saying they were surprised that I'm not wearing a mask. Well, I do wear a mask when it's appropriate, like when we're doing insulation or when we're sanding spackle because this will be a very fine dust and we don't want to get that into, our, into my lungs. So this is a COVID mask rather than a construction dust mask, but it'll do the same thing. Now I tried to bring the camera close so you could see the little bit of imperfections here, but it just didn't show up on the camera because they're so minor. But I just walk around with this and just sand it. Takes a very light sanding. Live simple, live free. You be blessed. We'll see you next time.